Spider-Man Remastered for the PlayStation 5 gets a brand new gameplay trailer to see this remaster in action. But there's definitely some controversy surrounding Peter Parker, and that seems to be what everyone is talking about. Super Mario 3D's All-Stars first sales data comes in, and well, it's very impressive. And finally, the new Smash Brothers Ultimate character is revealed. It's a Microsoft property, and I think this is a very interesting addition to the game. What's going on guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and yes, so far I have survived that bug bite I got yesterday, but without any further ado, let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games. So when it comes to PlayStation 5 games coming this holiday season, the one game I think everyone is looking forward to the most besides Demon Souls would have to be Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now, yes, this game is also coming to the PlayStation 4, which is a very strange thing, but Spider-Man Miles Morales obviously is probably going to be the biggest selling PlayStation 5 game this holiday season. This isn't really a sequel to the original Spider-Man game, more of an expansion of the game, but obviously it is utilizing the power of the PlayStation 5. You you have a different Spider-Man, you don't play as Peter Parker, you play as Miles Morales, and I think this game looks really cool. Everything we've seen from it so far looks very impressive, and this is the one game that I do have pre-ordered with my PlayStation 5 because, well, I'm just really looking forward to it. Now, of course, they are doing Spider-Man the original game remastered for the PlayStation 5 as well, and we finally got a look at this game in action yesterday with a brand new gameplay trailer. And once again, I think this game looks very impressive. Spider-Man remastered for the PlayStation 5 and includes things like ray tracing, 60 frames per second, 4K gameplay, and of course, better puddles. Remember Puddlegate with Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4? Yes, the puddles have been improved in this game. I think it looks awesome. This was one of my favorite games, if not my favorite PlayStation 4 exclusive. Yes, slightly more so than God of War was. So I'm definitely looking forward to replaying this game again because it's fun to play great games over and over. But there is one thing that is surrounding Spider-Man Remastered for the PlayStation 5 that has a lot of people upset and I, I, I don't know I, I don't really see it and that has to be with the Peter Parker character model because essentially what they have done is they have changed the original Peter Parker character model to look very different than the original character did in the PlayStation 4 version of the game now Insomniac gave some long story about why they had to do this because of motion capturing and things like the remastered edition but lots of people on the internet are very very upset by this and really I'm not quite sure sure why like obviously Peter Parker is an iconic character and the PlayStation 4 version of Peter Parker was fine I don't think anyone was upset by it but I'm not quite sure why people are upset that he has changed in the PlayStation 5 version of the game because well it's not Peter Parker for the PlayStation 4 it's Spider-Man for the PlayStation 4 and this is Spider-Man for the PlayStation 5 to me I play these games because I want to play as Spider-Man not so much Peter Parker and yes you do play as Peter Parker in some gameplay segments so it can be a little bit weird, but I don't know. This whole controversy surrounding the Peter Parker character model just seems really strange to me. I guess he does look a tad bit young, but I mean, let's be realistic. When you're at that age of your early 20s, there are people in their early 20s that still look like they're in high school, and that's kind of the situation and vibe I get with this. It's just a younger looking character model, but he still could be in his early 20s. So that's what everyone seems to be hung up about. Me, personally, I'm more interested in the gameplay and Spider-Man Remastered for the PlayStation 5, and everything we've seen so far from this game definitely looks like an improvement over the PlayStation 4 version. But the real question remains, are you upset by Peter Parker changing his physical appearance in the remastered edition of Spider-Man? Let me know in the comments down below. One of the hot topics of the month of September on the channel was, of course, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. I might have talked about it a few times on this channel, but yes, Super Mario 3D All-Stars was obviously a very big deal for Nintendo. Being announced and then releasing two weeks later, a compilation of three 3D Mario games on your Nintendo Switch, the fact that it was emulation, the fact that, well, games like Super Mario 64 didn't get widescreen support, it was all over the place, but at the end of the day, these are still three timeless classic games. Yes. I guess even Sunshine, even though I'm still not a huge fan of the game, I can appreciate the visual style a bit more. One thing that people were going to be very interested in, though, with Super Mario 3D's All-Stars was, of course, the sales of this game. We all know that, as of right now, this is a timed exclusive for the Nintendo Switch, and not a timed exclusive meaning that it's going to go to another console, but just a timed exclusive that, well, at the end of March, this game is going to go away completely. Now, of course, Nintendo could announce that they are individually releasing these games, but as it stands right now, all 
we know is that at the end of March, this game seems to be going away and you'll never be able to buy it again, which is really weird, but maybe Nintendo will address that situation. We finally have our first sales data for Super Mario 3D All-Stars, and really to the surprise of no one, this game is, well, selling very well. Now this information is coming to us from the UK sales chart, and Super Mario 3D All-Stars is the second fastest selling Mario platform release in series history, just behind Super Mario Odyssey. Now of course, this game did come out at the tail end of September, so they didn't have really a full month to get onto the sales charts with this. It was the number one selling game overall in the UK, beating out the Avengers, which really shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, but really the crazy stuff would have to be the fact that just how well this game helped propel Nintendo Switch sales. 32.3% of all physical games sold in the UK during September were Nintendo published titles. 41% of all physical games sold in the UK during September were for the Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch was the best selling console in September in the UK and Switch sales were up 90% year over year for the same time frame in 2019. So obviously Super Mario 3D All-Stars is going to be a huge success. People have so much nostalgia for these three Mario games and really they're still very fun games to play. Yes, even you can get some fun out of Super Mario Sunshine. It's not the best or anything like that, but there is some fun to be had with this compilation. Of course, we are waiting for NPD sales to see how uh, the game sold in the US as well, but obviously this was going to be a big cash cow for Nintendo. People are going to be very excited for this game, and I think those sales are going to continue into the holiday season as well. Mario is a popular franchise. Mario will sell Nintendo Switch consoles, and we're definitely seeing it with this sales data that we've gotten so far. So to the surprise of no one, Super Mario 3D All-Stars is a success. Who knew? Who knew? And finally, the new Super Smash Bros. Ultimate character was going to be revealed today with a three-minute presentation from Mr. Sakurai. People were all over the place with their predictions. Some people, like myself, thought maybe Dante is going to get in, maybe Crash Bandicoot is going to get in. But one character that has been rumored a long time for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate that maybe seemed like a bit of a pipe dream was Steve from Minecraft. Now, I'm not going to sit here and act like I know anything about Minecraft. I've never really played the game. I've played sort of subsidiary games that are inspired by Minecraft and things like that. But obviously, Minecraft is a very popular game. It's actually the best-selling game of all time. And Steve has been rumored to be entering the Smash Brothers universe via a character DLC download, but I don't really think anyone fully expected Steve to end up in Smash Brothers, even though it was sort of a rumor and a pipe dream. But that was the character we got today. Yes, Steve from Minecraft is now invading Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. We got a look at Steve in this three-minute presentation presentation there were some variations of Steve as well that were showcased of course there were different levels for Steve that are going to be used in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate but to me this is a huge deal you have to remember that Minecraft is now owned by Microsoft and Microsoft and Nintendo's relationship has been pretty interesting especially on the Nintendo Switch with games like Ori and Cuphead now of course Microsoft's Phil Spencer said that it seemed like the deal between Nintendo and Microsoft was going to be dead but then the Ori and the Will of Wisp game came to the Nintendo Switch completely completely out of nowhere. And now Steve from Minecraft is entering the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Universe. So if anything, I think this Nintendo and Microsoft partnership is better than it has ever been before. Obviously, in order to utilize the Steve character, there had to be some hoops to jump through with this, but Microsoft seems very willing to work with Nintendo on projects. And I really hope that that sort of elongates into a better partnership in the future, because there are games that are available on the Xbox that would make a perfect fit for the Nintendo Switch. Games like Rare Replay, like why isn't this game on the Nintendo Switch to begin with? Now we have two Microsoft properties with Banjo-Kazooie and Steve being DLC for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So if anything, going forward, I could see more Xbox One titles potentially coming over to the Nintendo Switch. Games like Rare Replay, maybe even a Halo that has been heavily rumored to be coming to the Nintendo Switch. I think you're going to see a lot more from Nintendo and Microsoft's partnership going on in 2021. And this is really just the tip of the iceberg. So if you've ever wanted to be Steve in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, this is your day to shine because Minecraft is invading Super Smash Bros.
All right, so that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to let me know what you think of everything in the comments section down below. Are you outraged about Peter Parker getting a cosmetic change, or do you not really care because you just want to play Spider-Man on the PlayStation 5? What do you think, of course, about Super Mario 3D All-Star selling very well? Are you surprised by this? Because, oh, well, I mean, you really shouldn't be. It's, it's Mario. Mario tends to sell very well when he gets new game releases. And, of course, Steve in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Minecraft invading the Smash Bros brothers universe are you a fan of this do you like this edition or do you think it would have been better to have another character and what do you think this says about the nintendo and microsoft partnership and as always guys thank you for checking out this video if you are new to the channel make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications check out other videos on the channel as well we just hit 339,000 subscribers on the channel so that's just absolutely crazy and as always guys i'll catch you guys on the next video later